In this video, I'm going to get more in-depth about the sawmill. The functions, the controls, the, you know, prepping to saw, and then sawing a few logs. The camera glitched on the, the first uh, take when I first came down and, and started working with this. Uh, I basically showed checking the oil, checking how much fuel, uh, and, and starting the mill. Here I'm checking the uh, log manipulating controls, uh, see everything functions properly, and it does not. My uh, log dogs or clamps are not rising properly, and it's because it's gotten water down into uh, the system, you know, where these things uh, go down and up it is a tube inside a tube and it has gotten water in there frozen and uh, you know I'm banging on a little bit to, to free it up and uh, I do get them working. This is the only thing that uh, the cold weather has uh, given me an issue with. All of the controls for manipulating a log is on a swing arm. With these controls you can pick a log up, put it on the mill, uh, move the log dogs up and down, bring the backstop up and down, and the log turner up and down. These are all direct lever control, so you have uh, the ability to manipulate fast or slow uh, as you do any of these tasks. All of the controls for the head are in a control box that is on an umbilical. I'll show you that just in a minute. That controls raising the blade up and down, moving the head back and forth along the uh, track, and bringing the blade guides in and out. This is all electric over hydraulic. So you push buttons or flip switches to activate solenoids which control hydraulic valves. There's a couple of stations for this box. This is the one right all the way at the one end of the mill. And then there's another station you can put it in that is at the hydraulic controls for the log loader and, you know, the log manipulation uh, control area. Or you can just carry it around with you and, and control the carriage and head. This is actually a very convenient uh, way of working with the, the head and carriage. There is a lever that allows you con to control the speed of the carriage forward. This gives you very precise control of your cut. The speed coming back is just full speed because you're not cutting anything so there's no reason to go slow coming back. I'm going to load a few aspen logs to cut up. I'm going to cut these into two by sixes for a project that I've come, got coming up next spring. These three logs are about all that this tractor will handle at one time. I can uh, use this to put a, a much larger log on, but you know, one at a time. In this situation, I managed to, to get all three and, and put it on. I have a larger tractor that I can uh, work with really large logs if I need to. 
Aspen is a relatively soft wood, uh, so cutting it frozen isn't too big of a deal. I don't use it for anything requiring a lot of strength, but uh, it works fine for small projects like uh, small sheds and siding and, and things that like that. Uh, it'd work for uh, interior paneling, um, anything that doesn't require a lot of load. Here I'm turning on the lubrication system. It's a drip onto felt which rubs on the top of the blade. And it works quite well. I run diesel fuel in it. Uh, and since you're only using uh, you know, a few drops uh, now and then, I've got it set for about one drop every three seconds. Uh, it lasts a long time and, and does a good job. I just started the blade spinning, uh, you know, worked the clutch, got that going, and then sped the motor up to full speed. Now I'm going to load the log and, and get that set up. This is a temporary setup for this mill. I'm hoping uh, maybe next summer or the summer after I will build a, a building for it, keep the whole thing covered, and have a place for uh, keeping stuff out of the weather. Once I get the log roughly in position, I'll back the clamps back off and then roll the log to put the face that I want to cut first up. There's a number of things that go into the decision as far as what I want to cut first. This log has a, a, a bad defect knot and it has a crook in it. So typically I put the worst face up first and actually the worst face also is the face that has the, the crook which I, I usually put up because of the way my clamps work. This mill has two clamps, so by putting the, the bow up, I engage both clamps where it is close to the bed. I have a chart on the end of the head that tells me how big of a cant I can get out of each log and also, you know, cutting if I'm trying to do, uh, you know, two buys or six buys, that type of thing. So that comes in very handy. This mill has a board return feature, which is very nice for cutting by yourself. I bring everything back to, to me where I'm at other than anything that I am going to edge. And uh, it just makes things uh, much less walking around uh, and, you know, moving boards. You can, you bring everything back and it's right there for you. I'm going to edge this board so I bring it back down onto the log lift. I'm going to be turning these logs into 2x6s. So I will slab this down or take a board or two off depending on how big the log is to get down to the point where I can create a 6 inch wide cant. And I'll take that, roll it up, and you know, cut another slab, and then just start making two by sixes out of the rest of that log. Depending on how much time I have, I will clear the deck uh, as the saw is cutting the next cut. Uh, in this situation, I can do that occasionally, but most of the time it's going too fast and uh, I have to just stack up a bunch of stuff and then clear it all at one time. If I'm dealing with uh, harder wood, longer logs, bigger logs, uh, the whole carriage is moving slow enough that I have enough time to uh, stack or, or take the slabs and put them on the tractor, that type of thing. In this scene, I'm putting slabs on the tractor forks and I'm putting boards over on a pile to the right, uh, which you'll be able to see in a little bit.
You can see that having that control box in my hand is very convenient for controlling boards as they come back or doing any other tasks uh, that I need to do at that end of the machine. The log clamps won't clamp a single board, so I leave a couple of boards up on the mill uh, so that I can edge it. Uh, this will make it easy enough for me to clamp and then uh, edge the board, and then I'll take all of those off at one time. This is another situation where bringing the controls, being able to swing that in close, uh, allows me to hold the slab while I am uh, bringing the clamps in or out, up, down, that type of thing. Um, another nice feature of this particular mill. You can see the stack of lumber uh, to the right of the screen there. I'll try to do a, a, a batch uh, of lumber or slabs or whatever. Uh, stop the mill forward back. I don't shut it off, but I, I uh, stop the movement and slow it down and clear that uh, in batches. I find that the most efficient way to do it. It always pays to double check that your log stops and your clamps and your turning arm is out of the way of the blade. I have not run into a sawyer yet that has, you know, running a band mill anyway, that has, can honestly say they have never run a band into one of those three things. And it always tends to be a new band when you do that. That's like uh, the fastest way to find a nail in a log is to put a new band on your saw. These are small, low quality logs, so I'm just kind of buzzing through them. I'm not taking much time to make sure that the bed is clear of sawdust and, uh, you know, the, the whole thing that if I were, were sawing cherry or maple, I'd be being a lot more careful with uh, how I'm handling the logs and, and how I'm sawing them. The project that these are destined for does not require accurately sawn lumber. I still try to saw them accurately, but I don't take quite as much precaution uh, with something like this that I would with uh, other high quality logs. For those of you who are curious, this is a Cook's 3238 sawmill full hydraulic. It's running a 35 horse gas motor. Um, nice saw. I, I like it. There's a few things that, uh, you know, I would change or I have changed on it. But, uh, you know, overall, it's a great saw. If you're interested in more detail on how I decide, you know, how to cut the log, what I, you know, do, especially if I'm doing, uh, you know, a high grade uh, sawing, um, or any questions that you have, you know, just feel free to leave me a comment. I read them all.
So if you've got this far in the video, uh, please hit like, hit subscribe, comment, uh, encourage me to, to keep going with these guys. They do take some time and effort. If you'd like to see more sawmill videos or more in the woods or equipment, uh, you know, whatever you would like to see, let me know and I'll try to accommodate. Thanks for watching.